Hello, good afternoon, welcome. If you are returning to my videos, thank you for coming back. If this is the first time you have been here, welcome. This is going to be a video about cross stitch. If you have seen other floss tube videos, you're probably well aware of that. I will be showing you the finishes that I have since my last posting and my progress and acquisitions. Before I go any further, three caveats about what you may see or hear on the screen. First, I apologize about the lighting. Uh, secondly, my voice may not be very strong because I have not had another person in my house since last spring. Well, no, I did have an air conditioning service guy in the spring to make sure my system was working. And I had a handyman in September because I had a bird trapped in my range vent. But other than that, nobody has set foot in this house but me since last spring. I haven't laid eyes on a family member since February, and although I do talk by phone and sometimes Skype, I don't have a lot of people to talk to directly, so my voice might give out. Uh, thirdly, with stitching and all my other activities, reading and um, so on, a lot of what I do is very sedentary, and I need to stand more. Since I retired last May and stopped working, I'm sitting way too much. It's not good for my blood pressure. It's not good for my health. So I've kind of rigged up a standing desk here and you may see me move or shift a lot because I'm accustomed to being in motion when I'm talking and standing at the same time. So my apologies. I'm going to try to hold still, but you may have more movement than usual from me. And the final caveat to prepare you for this video is if you hear any strange noises in the background, any complaints while I'm filming, it would probably be due to this young lady. Uh, she is my new kitty. I got her in September. Some of you who've watched my videos in the past may recall that my other kitty had an oral cancer and had to be put down in December of 2019. I waited nine months before I felt prepared to bring another cat into my life and they could only give me an estimate of her age. She's five or six years old. But she may have something to say about me filming the video. She may not, but if you hear or see anything unusual, it's probably her. Okay, so my last video was posted in June of 2020. We're kind of right in the middle of the month. That was seven months ago, so one might expect that I would have a lot to show. Unfortunately, as far as floss tube viewing goes, I actually did very little stitching for the first five of those months. Very little is kind of a vague term, so I'm going to try to give you an idea of what I mean by that. When I came to you last June, one of the things I showed you was this. It is from the Omni Book of Winged Things from Jeanette Cruz Designs. It's a bee with a big pink flower. And that's about how far I was when I showed him to you last June. And in the five months following, I got from what you saw there to approximately here. I say approximately because actually I didn't think to take this picture until after I'd put another hour into the wing. So you have to ignore most of the wing there. And what you see is five months of progress. Obviously, I was not stitching much. Uh, I just added a little to the petals and gave the bee a body. That is not much stitching. So, how is it I'm here to see you today? Well, in late November, I did take up my needle again and I did start stitching. I started stitching, for me, what would qualify as heavily. So, that's why I've got things to bring to you. What was I doing in the other five months? Well, adjusting to retirement, obviously. But the two primary things that occupied quite a bit of my day were uh, taking up my instrument again. I had set it aside when parent was hospitalized and I went through all that and had my involuntary transfer at work and everything. As I got closer to retirement, after what was pretty much a three to four year lapse in performance, I took up my instrument again, started watching videos to try to improve my tone and technique and breathing and resonance and all those things. Then I sort of segued into videos that were just other people playing my instrument and I spent uh, several hours a day practicing and watching videos. 
But they weren't floss tube. In fact, I didn't watch much floss tube at all during that entire time. The other thing that took up many hours of my day was much less productive than working with my instrument. And that was this MMORPG that I'm involved with. It was going to have an expansion in 2020, and I spent an inordinate number of hours, more and more as the date for the expansion approached, trying to clear content from the prior expansions that I had never gotten to. Um, we just won't go there. It was way too many hours. Not coincidentally, once the expansion finally launched at late November, I took up my needle again because all of that preparation, all those hours every day, was just to clear things that I was interested in doing. I was never interested in the expansion. And yes, I have it, and yes, on weekends I play it with my friends on Saturday nights, but frankly, it's boring as heck. Um, I don't care for it. I don't care for the changes they made in the game. Yeah, that's not distracting me from my needlework anymore. So, once I came back to stitching in late November. Oh, and by the way, I will come back to the playing the instrument thing when I start talking about acquisition, simply because some of my good behavior in avoiding cross-stitch purchases only came about because of music purchases. But we'll save that for later when I'm in the acquisition phase of this video. So once I came back to cross-stitching in late November, the first thing I picked up, I set my B aside, and I took up Christmas stitching. Ladybug Design Stained Glass Nativity. I've showed this to you before. At the time that I was showing it to you in June, it looked See if we can get there. It looked like this. And ignore the stuff at the bottom, that's just another cross stitch piece. So I had a good portion of the center panel, but not all the way to the bottom. I was deliberately leaving the Christ child unstitched because I was saving him for either Christmas or whenever I got to the end of the piece. There's supposed to be a shepherd over here, wise men on this side. I still had quite a way to go. So late November, I picked it up, took to stitching again. This piece, by the way, I just noticed in a recent catalog is still available from, I don't remember if it was the Stitchery or Hirschner's where I got it, but they still have it. It was just in their catalog. Anyway, I hoped as I worked on it to maybe finish it by Christmas, I came close. There it is. All done. I did put the Christ Child in on Christmas Day, really the evening of Christmas Day, but I still had a lot of that grass, I'd say 600 stitches or so under the Three Kings to do and the black frame, which I did most of on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And on December 27th, I think it was, I put in the last couple of lines of the black frame down there below the kings and I was done. So I'm pretty happy with it. What you might want to know about it if you have any interest in stitching it is that the chart does not match the model. Uh, specifically when they stitched it there well they placed the stars slightly differently but they made differences in the shading around the edges of the window and on some of the figures on this, I can never do this backwards, on the shepherd for example, you'll see the shading in his robe has a couple of colors there on that first big wrinkle. That wasn't in the chart. So mine looks a little odd to me, but he doesn't have that shading. I followed the chart. I did not look at the model very much at all while stitching. But there we go. So if you do get that piece, you have to decide for yourself, do you want it to look like the model they stitched, or do you want to just follow the chart? Either way, it turns out very nicely, I think. I'm happy with it. So I had hoped to finish it by Christmas. Didn't quite. Got it done a couple days after. As soon as it was done, I came back to my bee. And I realized that this is a very tiny picture, but that's what he was supposed to look like when finished. And I don't know if I need any backgrounds for these, but oh, upside down. Let's get you the right way around, little bee. There he is. 
might be. I don't know if this background's a good plan. <laughs> I was hoping it would help you to see it better. So, I had hoped after doing the stained glass piece to have him done before the end of the year. That was a little ambitious. Then I thought, well, maybe before the end of the last week of the year, which ended with January 2nd. And not quite. I think I finished him on the 3rd. But I got close. So picked him up on the 27th and had him done almost within a week. Obviously the five months of not stitching on him was pretty much wasted time because it didn't take any time to do him once I came back to him. Alright, and I do like a lot of the things in that Jeanette Cruz book. So I would love to do more of them. Um, I have one of them kitted up and ready to go now. Okay, after I finished the bee, I turned to... Sorry, looking for a place to dump things as I progress. I turned to my Bernat Carousel Lion. The last time you saw him, and he is from... 1988, which is pertinent to something I have to say about him, but the last time you saw him, he looked pretty much like this. All the cross stitches were done. I had done some of the green back stitching. I had done the blue back stitching around the blue flowers. I think I had done all the yellow French knots, and a little bit of the two colors of red backstitching that go around the red flowers. He looked pretty close to done there, but what he needed, in addition to what I just told you, was to finish the green backstitching, to finish the red around the flowers. He needed, on his body, two shades of red backstitching, maroon backstitching, blue backstitching, three shades of brown backstitching, black backstitching, um, there was brown on the pole, too, and he had another 29 French knots, and the piece had 96 lazy daisies. So he might have looked almost finished in that last picture there from June, but he actually took some time. I hoped to do him in a week. He actually took less time than that. But there he is, all finished up. Lazy daisies and all. Oh, what is that? Go away. So I said his age was going to be pertinent to something I had to say about him. I hope you can't see, but I am well aware and I can see. Sorry, I think I just smashed the microphone. That I should have done what they always recommend to do before I started. And I ran into this problem with my Japanese koi as well. I should have rinsed the floss. They always tell you to do that. I've often pretty much always been lazy and not done it. And the medium red color in this 1988 kit was not color fast. And it ran. And I soaked him for a long time to try to make up for that. But all those little red French knots and anywhere else that the medium red was in the flowers, um, down near the bottom of his belt because there was French knots there, it all ran. It ran. He was pink. He still looks pink to me in spots. I never did get it all out. So those were my three finishes. They're obviously not fully finished objects. There's a reason that they're not fully finished. Um, number one, pandemic, obviously. Uh, but also some of the pieces are meant to go with something else. So the carousel lion, you may recall, is a companion piece to two other carousel horses that I have not stitched and one that I have. You've seen this one before. So carousel lion and this horse go together. When I frame them, I want to frame them all at the same time. The bee is not framed, again, pandemic, but also because I kind of want him to go with this design from the same book, except the frame is problematic. I got this frame I may have told you this story before. In the frame shop, picked it out, had the help of the, the guy who runs the shop. Um, they framed it for me. I got it home and I had to buy extra wood and add it to the back of the frame because it was not deep enough. 
it was not deep enough for a cross-stitching piece. But they sold it to me anyway. They stuffed it in there. They tried to make it fit. So although I'd like the B to match this, I don't know if I want to go through all that again so that it can match it. I may just have to find a different frame when the time comes. Okay, you may have noticed a little pattern here. I picked up the stained glass nativity and stitched until it was done. I picked up the B and stitched until it was done. I picked up the lion and stitched until it was done. So that was fully my intention with the next piece that I undertook. My intention, intention being an important word. The piece that I decided to work on, I had also shown you in June. Let's see if I can find a picture of what I showed you then. Um, actually, I took a picture just before stitching on it again. It is out of a magazine. I have no idea what magazine, but it is Monument Valley by Georgia Ball. I don't know if she's the artist or the designer, but it's supposed to look like that when it's done. And when I took it up again after finishing the lion, I had that much done on it. I remember telling you that I wasn't real excited because they were like baby colors, baby blues and pinks, and that wasn't really what I wanted to get to. Baby blue, that's a sore point. I was stitching away, and I realized pretty quickly, I think I took it up on maybe the 7th of January, and I recalled as soon as I started stitching that, hey, this blue was, this skein of blue was disappearing very fast. I should have ordered more. All of these flosses are anchor floss for this piece, which means they're not available to me anywhere locally, and I had to order them online. I remember telling you that in June. I ordered some from Everything Cross Stitch and some from 123 Stitch, and uh, I have some from eBay. I you know, got everything together. The baby blue came from 123 Stitch, and I realized I was going to run out. So on the 8th of January, I placed an order, of course, you know, flosses can never travel by themselves. So the floss came with some other acquisitions that I'll be showing you a little later. But in the meantime, I was frustrated because I wanted to pick up the piece and stitch, start to finish. But the blue, as you can see, is the sky. And I like to stitch, you know, start in the center, work my way to the top, go out and down. And the sky obviously is above everything. So I needed to finish the sky and I couldn't. I couldn't finish it because I ran out of floss just as I predicted I would. And I took a picture of the point at which I ran out of blue floss. It's a bad picture, I'm sorry, but at that point, no more blue. Ran out completely. So I got desperate enough that I went into my stash to some anchor threads that I had gotten from eBay and I thought, you know, these may not match, it might be a different dye lot, I don't know what will happen. So you can see I kind of left off neatly with a single row there, I did the next row down. It didn't match. It was, it's not the same blue. So I thought, well, it was eBay and I had to set aside my piece in frustration and work on something else until the floss arrived. It came a week after I ordered. So Friday. I was very excited, got it out, immediately started taking a look at it. It was a perfect match for the eBay floss, not for what was stitched in the piece. It doesn't match. I, it, I ordered it from 123Stitch, same as the one I got last May. It's not the same color. So this is my progress. This is where I am. And I bet you can see, as I can, exactly where the blue changed. It doesn't match, and I don't know what to do. I could keep ordering floss till the cows come home, and I might never find that same blue again. I could pull out an entire skein, eight meters worth of blue. But what if the next one I order to replace that skein turns out to be the light color again? I just don't know what to do, so I kept stitching. It's it's never going to be the right color. Uh, I don't want to get rid of the piece. I don't want to throw it out. I don't want to start over. I don't want to get new fabrics and flosses and everything. 
I'm just going to have to learn to live with the blue not matching. And you can see up here in the sky too. You can tell exactly where I changed to the new blue. It's darker. It doesn't match. Really frustrating. And they say buy from, you know, reputable stores. I did. Um, I should have ordered it all at the same time, I guess. But, by the way, I am also concerned that this skein won't last for the whole piece. So I've, I'm actually blending it with the eBay one, which is fine. But that way I get two skeins, you know, and that's not what's making it too dark. If anything, the eBay one might be slightly lighter than the new one. What can I say? I, I want to do the piece. I don't know any solution start of, short of, you know, throwing it out and starting it over, and I'm not going to do that. And ordering, you know, all the floss in one batch. I did order more of the other colors in the piece, too. Now that I realized one skein is not going to be enough for the blue, it probably won't be enough for any of the other things either. This chart did not give any indication of how much floss you needed. It just gave the colors. So I should have suspected. It's a pretty big piece. It's a 156 by 109. So I should have realized I was going to need more than one. Totally my fault. Totally. Okay, so what did I work on during the interval when I thought I was going to get the right color and didn't? As I said, you might notice a pattern. By the way, that is my little girl howling down there, if you hear her. Um, I, want, I know what piece I want to do after this. I want to stitch this one through till it's done. When I come to you again, I'm hoping it'll be because this is done. But the next piece that I have in mind, I didn't want to pick up and do. It's my oldest and least favorite whip. I'm sort of rewarding myself for finishing this when I get there by digging into, how can you call that a reward? Punishing myself? I don't know. By digging into the one I don't want to do. And after it is another piece, and that's the one I turned to. I turned while waiting for my floss for a few days there to my Orenko rabbit. Now an interesting thing about being a dreaming stitcher is that I somehow in my mind can extrapolate from what I see on the fabric to what the finished product is going to look like. And I do that all the time and I see the whole piece in my mind's eye. And so I can take something like that rabbit which once upon a time, I wonder if I have a picture of him Nah, I don't think I do, was just a bit of his head and tabard, and in my head, I saw the whole thing. I saw his, um, I saw all of it. I saw him finished, and it clearly it wasn't. So when I showed him to you most recently, in my mind, what you see there is like, it's done. It's actually full of all kinds of holes, as you can tell. It's, his face is not finished, his ears are not done, there's huge gaps up here, the border's not going down, I mean there's so much missing. So during the few days that I was waiting for my floss, mostly I was filling in all this part. I did add some stitches to other parts of the rabbit, but mostly I was filling in that part. I also, I told you before I hated the scroll frame he was on, he kept falling off, I put him on a new scroll frame. But here he is, all of this part here now is filled in. It was just holes before, not quite above the instrument. I stopped just above the instrument. But, and I moved the border down some more, obviously, and we've added some to his ears. And put a little bit more into his face, actually, and into his ruff. You can't really tell, because there's still so many holes. But when I couldn't work on Monument Valley, I was working on him. So now he actually is starting to be filled in, when before he was only filled in in my imagination. But he's got a long way to go. A very long way to go. But he is planned for the start, uh, not the start, the whip after the whip, after the Monument Valley. So that was my progress. Thank you for watching all of that and listening to me babble about it. I would like next to talk to you about my acquisitions and show you what I've got and sort of talk about how my new pattern of stitching has been something of an antidote for me to the desire to purchase any more cross stitch. Uh, 
in June, when I last saw you, the I told you I was kidding up my bucket list starts. The only cross-stitch acquisition that I had after speaking to you, I already had ordered, you know, flosses and fabrics and things, but the only thing that I got was this box that has now become my box of shame. I never had a box of shame before, but now that I have pieces that are not getting finished, I needed something to put them in. So I went out and bought a box. That was the only other thing I got in June. In July, I made it almost through the month without ordering anything cross-stitchy. When the 30th of July came, I did orders. And I ordered from a Russian site, and the reason I placed my order, I ordered seven items, I believe, is because my first Russian order that I had placed in March finally showed up. March, April, May, June, July. Four months. It finally showed up. It was the first time I'd ever ordered from that site. I was so nervous. I thought, what if they're not really a legit site? What if it never comes? I've spent all this money with them. I was really stressed, but I kept going back and looking at things there and adding them to a wish list, even though I didn't know if I would ever order from them again. And when it finally came in safely at the end of July, there was all that stuff in my wish list, you know? Actually, some of it was no longer in stock, but the things that were, I ordered. August came, and I'll show you those. August came and I placed one order on the 1st of August for one item. And it was an item that was a companion piece to one of the Russian things that had arrived. And I had originally seen these in a Hersner's catalog and I wanted the pair of them. And the price at the Russian site was so good, I went ahead and ordered the one, even though it was only the one I could get. So when it finally came in, August 1st, I turned around and ordered the matching piece from Hearst Nurse Online. Okay, that was the only purchase in August of cross-stitch. September, no cross-stitch purchases at all. October, no cross-stitch purchases at all. November, four items. I'll show them to you. Not four orders, four items. That was it. December, well, let's skip December for a moment. January, I ordered the floss I needed, and a couple of kits found their way in with the floss. December, December was, yeah, I fell down the hole in December. You have to understand, it was the first holiday completely alone, and I think I was trying to reward myself, you know, make myself feel better. So I did order some things. I will show them to you. Uh, meanwhile, though, I told you I'd come back to the instrument during all that time that I was not buying cross-stitch and I was obsessively practicing my instrument and watching videos about my instrument. I was purchasing sheet music. So yeah, I now have a, an extensive sheet music library. Because after all, I can't go to band. They're not meeting. But that's an excuse, right? I mean, legitimate, isn't it? Um, yeah. That culminated in November with the purchase of a nine-volume set of orchestral excerpts for my instrument. And that was it. <laughs> okay. That was like a quarter of all the things I bought. That was... Yeah. No more music. Thank you. But I didn't buy any cross-stitch. So how is it that I look forward then, as I show you these things that I bought in those months, to not buying more. Well, it's because of this stitching. When I stitch on one piece only, and I know all you whipaholics out there are never going to do this because you have your 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 whips, um, but it makes it very real to me just how much time a piece takes. In fact, I made a little calculation for myself of the pieces I want to work on and how long, how many stitches are involved if they were full coverage, which some of them are. This is virtually a full coverage piece. It has some clouds in the sky, obviously, but I've done most of those already. The rest of it is solid. This rabbit is solid. Um, the stained glass nativity was solid. Many of these things are for all intents and purposes, 
near full coverage, if not full coverage. Others, not so much. But of the ones I want to do, um, I'm looking at full coverage, full coverage. One that's not full coverage, but it's got all kinds of uh, fractional stitching, and it's stitched on black, and it's got a lot going on with it. Uh, one that's just plain huge. They take a lot of hours, and I'm finding out just how many hours they take while doing them. It took me from late November till the end of December to finish that stained glass nativity, even though it was well underway, as you saw when I picked it up. Uh, the B took the better part of a week. It, it took, well, pretty much a whole week to do that little B. The lion only took a few days, but hey, he was stitched except for all of those you know, back stitching and French knots and lazy daisies. It still takes time. So by doing that, by co focusing on one piece at a time, what I'm trying to say is I want to do all these other things. I am still the dreaming stitcher. I know that I never will. Uh, my sister doubted this. She said, how do you know? And I said, physics, the laws of physics, time, eternity. <laughs> there, there are not enough hours in the day that I could ever stitch everything I have. So it was actually very painful to shop for the floss that I needed because I felt like I had to put something else in the cart. I didn't want needles. I didn't want or need, you know, uh, in the past I've bought some stretcher bars for needlepoint. I've got plenty of those. I didn't want, there were no accessories. I don't spend money on needle minders. I don't need any fabric for anything that I'm kidding up right now. There was nothing I needed. So I did end up with a couple of small kits, but really, as I said, it's painful because I don't want more. I have so much already. So what I did buy was a little kit that I got because it makes me think of a kit by Elisa that the Russian website had that was out of stock which is far more beautiful than this. But I could, notice it says my first embroidery, if I ever met someone that I wanted to lure into the world of cross-stitching, I could use that. And I saw one that I want to use as a gift for a friend. I've given her penguins in the past. She's into fish. I want to make this one for her. So those were the kits I threw in. That came from 123stitch in January. So I'm going to go ahead and back up and show you all my other acquisitions, but have you understand that this is probably it. Uh, I have one more order that it has made it from Russia to New York as of yesterday, so it should be coming within the next few days. But other than that, I have found a couple of ways to keep from buying things. One of them is this non-stop stitching. Gosh, I've been talking a long time, haven't I? I'm sorry. And the other is when I feel the temptation to go look somewhere like eBay. Lately, what I've been trying, and it's been working so far, is I filter it to show me only the most expensive cross-stitch kits. So one day I said, only show me the ones that are above $50. The next day, time I wanted to look, I said, show me all the patterns and kits that are above $70. Because I look at them and think, that's not worth that. That is not worth $90. That is not worth $150. That is not worth, I saw one, $500. That, I'm sorry, that's not worth that. Yes, $500. No, but I can look at and see cross-stitch when I feel a need to go out and see things I don't have. And there's absolutely zero temptation to buy them. So when you see me in the future, other than showing you that order that's coming in, I'm probably not going to have acquisitions to show you. I'll just show you my progress. I could still show you my stash. <laughs> oh Lord, there's tons of that. But you won't have to worry about me having more and more to show every month because it won't be there. I don't plan to buy it. So let's go all the way back to July. My Russian order came in and I placed another one and I honestly can't quite sort which ones were with the July order and which ones were from the March order. But I'm going to show you what I got then. These were these were from the July order. I've told you I like dinosaurs. Let's get you guys the right way around. I got Triceratops and Stegosaurus and Tyrannosaurus and Pteranodon. Maybe he's a pterodactyl. Pteranodon. 
and they had a plesiosaur who was out of stock, so he's actually with the order that's coming this week. That's why that order got placed, was he finally came back in stock. Um, I think this was probably the March order. A fish. By the way, the website, if I didn't say that, was my bobbin. I do trust them now. They finally came. I'm very happy with them. I placed the July order plus two in December. I told you we won't talk about December. <laughs> um, this came from the March order, I believe. And notice these are all nice and small, so it seems like there's a possibility of doing them. That came from them. This is the brand, Elisa, that had the pumpkin that I really liked that wasn't in stock. Um, this one. I love irises. I've told you that before. I've showed you that before. And a little hedgehog. There were more. Some of these were the March order, some were the July order. But let's see. This is the one that had a companion piece in Hirsch Nurse. That is... Let me try to find it right here. So this is the one I ordered from Hirsch Nurse. That's the one I ordered from the Russian site. Notice they go together. Um, this was from Russia. From my bobbin. That was definitely the July order. It was in my wish list. I just thought those apples were gorgeous. Most of the kits you'll notice are Russian. But we have Luca S. And uh, they sometimes have others. They actually had this anchor kit. That was from end of July, I believe. Have that. All of these are from my bobbin. Koi. I love koi. I've done other koi. Saw this on eBay or somewhere. Didn't like the price. Had a chance to get it for a very reasonable price from my bobbin. It's obviously not just cross stitch. It's got various sorts of black work and stuff in it too. Um, they had a really lovely one of zebras and things too, but I'm into giraffes mostly. This was called a nuzzling, I think. I love those giraffes. Um, more irises. And this one, one of the things about the My Bobbin site is the little preview pictures kind of cut off most of the image sometimes. So you have to click on them if you want to see the full image. And I clicked on this one and just gasped. It was gorgeous. This was the most expensive thing I bought from them. It's something about Algiers, ships in Algiers or something. Now when am I ever going to get it stitched? I don't know. Remember, I'm the dreaming stitcher. I'll keep dreaming. These things take hours and hours and hours, but I have to believe that somehow I'll get some of them done. Which ones? I don't know. You know, I could die today, I could die tomorrow and have none of them done. I could live 30 years and lose my eyesight. Uh, who knows? But that was all the My Bobbin stuff from March and July, plus the one Hearst Nurse from August. So nothing in September except sheet music. Nothing in October except sheet music. November came, and I bought four items. So the first one was on the 19th of November. I purchased this chart. And I'm thinking of doing a separate video at some point when I'm getting ready to do this, begging for some help because this fabric, this is a very old chart, this fabric is not produced anymore. I don't know where to get it. I don't know what it is. They say that it is 18 count Davos from Witchelt. Okay, Zweigart makes something called Davosa. I can't find any Davos from Witchelt. It is an 18 count fabric. I have seen the Zweigart for sale with the same stock number that they're showing here, 3770. As far as I can tell, that's the number for Davosa from Zweigart and for Davos from Wichelt, and I don't know why they have the same number. But the color they represent with the number 916, which is not Christmas red or Victorian red, and those are the only reds available now from Zweigart. I don't know what red that is. Does it matter? Well, yeah, you need a background color. And there are large sections of the chart, for example, in some of these banners, that are not stitched. I can't stitch this without that red. I need to know what the red is. So I'm thinking of doing a, a general video, just shouting out to everybody in Floss Tube, asking for help on what is that color. 
You know, it'd be nice to know if there's a name for the fabric, like Christmas red or Victorian red, which it isn't either of those. But a floss equivalent <laughs> would be great. Then I could just make it into a full coverage piece. So I got that in November. I also got this. You know I'm obsessed with these NP designs, which is kind of ironic because the first time I had an opportunity to buy one was at a trading post in northern Arizona, and I bought one of their pots, but I the rugs just didn't do anything for me at the time. The first time I got a rug, I was at a monument in New Mexico. Uh, is it a monument? A, a, I don't know what you would call it. The bird sanctuary. Anyway, I bought a rug from them, and it just sort of took off from there. So yeah, when I see these at a good price, I get them. So the other two November purchases were once I got that one, I got a little obsessed, and I got these two. They say burnt water brown on this one because they apparently also have a burnt water green. They give you the conversion for that in here, but they don't sell it as a kit. These are all kits, by the way. And the Tisnaz Pass, this is the small one. They actually have a special edition version that's much larger, which I know because of December. So December. Yeah, December. Let's start with looking at all my little piles. The first things I got in December. I was very sad that these, this is actually the second things I ordered, did not come with the frames. I've gotten Vervaco kits before that actually had those little frames in them. These didn't come with the frames. These are from eBay. You can see it's a set of little blue flowers, which I thought were beautiful. And the don't get me wrong, the person who listed them did not say they came with frames. But I was just hoping they would, because I don't know where and how to get these. They're metric sizes. And these three beautiful little birds. So I treated myself to those. I also, in December, later in the month, got... I already had the chart for this. But pretty much this was, uh, they were accepting offers, and their original price was higher than I liked, but I got these for about half the current retail price. So even though I had a chart of this, here I get the kit with all the fabric and flosses and everything ready to go. I don't have to worry about running out of some color and not being able to match it. Um, <laughs> this, we have a Tis Nospas, which I've seen stitched up. It's gorgeous. And again, it comes with all the colors I need, 13 different flosses in all the proper quantities with the fabric. The first thing I got in December was Hershner's Fault. They had these on sale. And I actually went to Amazon to buy them because Amazon, if you didn't know it already, stocks a lot of the Hershner things. Uh, Hershner fulfills the orders through Amazon in many cases. So what these are, I measured a space for them where I can put them in my house, is these beautiful 32 inch by 32 inch, approximately I think it was, tablecloths. Very Christmassy. That have uh, sections in them for stitching. Have Aida sections within them. And because they were a good price, I got three different ones. Yeah. And I, I had a place on my counter to put them, but there was no time to stitch. So one of these Christmases, they're going to go under my little countertop tree. Sorry. Knob Hill. So that one has ornaments and bells. This one has wreaths and candy canes. In Knob Hill, got it from Amazon, but it, you can get it, could get them at Hershner's if they have not sold them all out. And reindeer and flowers. Nordic deer table topper, they call that one. At the same time that I was getting those, I'm going to hold this far enough back that you can't see the symbols. I've been admiring in their catalog for a while this really cute little dragon. Yes, he's a stamped cross-stitch. I'm not into stamped cross-stitch, but it occurred to me 
they have him uh, as a dresser scarf too that I can use the pattern and put him on any fabric I want. I don't have to do the stamped cross stitch. So he's cute. I got him. Those were the first of all my December purchases. Then I ordered some eBay things that took a while to come and they have all arrived. Some of them just within the past week. Except for that one, my bobbin order. So let's start with my bobbin. I got five things. And it's because one of them had been um, out of stock when I wanted it. This used to be readily available here, but I never got it. I looked through my collection. It's like, gosh, I never got those herons. I always liked those herons. So I wanted them from my bobbin. And of course, they couldn't stay in the cart alone. So they were joined by this little cat. Some of these small ones, I think, if I tried them, they would actually have a chance of getting stitched. And this will be a gift for a pug lover. I have nothing to say about that. You either think it's incredibly cute or revolting, and I can't change your mind either way. So that would be a gift for someone. And this plays into my Japanese-Asian aesthetic that I got from my parents who were stationed in Japan in the 50s. I wasn't even born, but they brought home enough things from Japan that that has affected my uh, artistic sensibilities, I guess. And I thought this was gorgeous. So those are the ones that came from my bobbin. Then there were a couple from France. You have seen my sheep. This fellow, this lady, excuse me, definitely the lady, was always advertised in stitchery or wherever with the sheep before. And they were too darn expensive. And I got the sheep when it finally dropped to a price that I could almost justify to myself. And the cow was about the same price on eBay. So I finally got her now. I won't keep looking for her anymore. In fact, that's sort of the theme of some of these. Now that I have my sort of unicorn pieces, I won't keep looking for them anymore. Unfortunately, the same seller had this gorgeous thing that I had never seen before and thought was absolutely beautiful. So it had to come with the cow. They actually came separately, but they came from the same seller. It's a Taya Gouvenor piece, and it was way too expensive, but it's stunning, I think. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to show you, gosh, this is a long video, is from another Russian seller. And other than that five pieces still coming from my bobbin that were in New York, this will hopefully be my last acquisition. Um, they were having kind of a sale, which helped offset the tax, basically. I mean, when, they, when eBay tells you, you know, buy two or more, three or more, or whatever, and get 5% off, that's eaten up immediately by the applicable taxes. But at least, you know, 5% is 5%. So I looked through their things, and these three were sold as a single item. And I had seen them many times before. I probably could have gotten them from my bobbin instead of this seller. But since I kept pausing on them and looking at them whenever I saw them, I thought, go ahead. So there's that one. The poppies, which I had seen less often. But these white ones. So I had seen the white roses many times, white briar they call it, and I had stopped and paused on the... Do they have a name for this one? They do, but I don't know what it is. Many times. And then the poppies are nice too. So that was a single item. Buy three, get 5% off. The second one, I showed you some like this before. This is toadstools. He actually had, he or she, had other, at least one other mushroom one that I didn't have yet. I think it was white mushrooms or something. I showed you three before. But uh, I didn't like it as much as this. So I have my other three, and I have the toadstools. And I don't care if they make more. I have plenty. I need to make my other three and these toadstools. And all the hours that it takes to make them before I worry about buying any more. And the last one 
by the way, when I do my little search at eBay of show me things 50 and up or 70 and up or whatever, they don't show me everything. I know they don't because this kit there are multiple copies of and it's always more <laughs> than that price. Um, the cheapest I've seen was like $55 with $9 shipping just recently. Um, mine came out close to that because it was free shipping and it was the 5% off. But um, I was tired of looking at it. I've seen someone selling the chart probably illegally out of Australia. I've seen uh, AliExpress or whoever they are, one, one of those companies that you don't always trust to be honoring Western copyrights. Um, they've had it. I wasn't going to buy it there. I finally sucked up and spent quite a bit, but now I won't keep looking anymore. This was my last acquisition and this is why I ordered from that Russian seller. It's obviously easily available in Russia because I've seen it, lots of copies on eBay, but they're all very expensive. It's called Italian Vista, and it's a gold collection. It has a little Russian sticker on the back. It's a gold collection from 2000 and something. I can't remember the year, 2012. So not all that long ago in the scheme of things, but I never saw it until I started seeing it on eBay, and I fell in love the minute I saw it. And so it goes into my gold collection of things that may never get stitched. All right, thank you if you sat through that whole thing. There is one more thing I want to ask of you, and I would have put it up at the front, but I know I don't have all that many viewers, and I want to ask about someone who didn't have all that many viewers. I told you that I was watching videos about my instrument for months and not watching FlossTube, and that means I missed out on some things going on in the FlossTube world. And when I came back to looking at FlossTube as I began stitching again, I realized that someone that I had come to really care about seeing and looked forward to her videos and things is not there. I mean, completely not there. No channel anymore. No anything on YouTube. It's when you click on old comments, she doesn't exist. And because of the way the world is, I, I worry. And that's Jane from Granny Baker and Stitches. She used to go by Mrs. Baker Girl. And if any of my viewers happen to know what became of Jane, I just want to know that she's alright, that she's alive and well in the world. That That's all I want to know. Um, because I worry. She was English. She's out of the UK. She had some health issues. Um, I just want to know that nothing bad happened. So if anybody sees this, if you watched all the way through the video to this point, thank you very much. If you're one of her viewers or know someone that knows her, I don't have any other social media. I don't do Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. So I have no other way of knowing what she went by in the social media world. But if anyone can give me any news, I, like I said, I just want to hear that she's okay. So that I can think of her being alive and well and okay in the world. So, uh, and I know floss tubers don't always stay there. I've, I've encountered plenty that don't post anymore or that make their content private um, or remove all their content, but I'm not used to having them completely disappear and remove their channel in the middle of a pandemic. And I've, I've had other floss tubers that, you know, ran afoul of YouTube for whatever reason. And I found out later that that's why they were gone, like Sunroom, Sunscreen, Sunroom Stitcher. I enjoyed her videos. I came across a blog of hers. She wasn't posting anymore because she did something to violate YouTube policy. I'm not sure she was entirely sure what she'd done, but oh well, so she wasn't on YouTube anymore. Maybe that's what happened to Jane. I don't know, but please, if anybody knows, just put something in the comments, let me know. All right, thank you for watching. I This was the third Sunday of the month. I used to post on the third Sunday of the month. So I, am, I might do that. We will see. I You can expect me to be stubbornly monogamous for a while. I don't know how long that will last, but as I said, it's really helping me. That is my antidote to buying more. It's helping me to see how much time really is needed to do these cross stitches. It's not like I didn't know it, but when that's all you work on, you really know it. You really know how many hours each one takes. And I have no reason to want to buy more when I have all these beautiful things I want to make. I've shown you many before. I still have lots of stash I can show you. I have 
multiple lifetimes worth of beautiful things I want to make. And I tried to ca calculate out how long it would take to do just the ones that I've started. I'm sorry, I'm looking around for my little calculation sheet, but it's buried under something. And I told you I was kind of thinking of them as full coverage, how many hours that would require. I was estimating if it averaged 100 stitches an hour. Now that may not seem very fast, but I doubt if I do more than that once you calculate um, the time for color changes and threading the needle and getting the kit out and staring at the pattern and all those different things that you have to do. Some pieces obviously will go faster, like my um, stained glass nativity, big blocks of color, goes pretty quickly. Others, like the rabbit with a lot of confetti, is going to take longer. But let's suppose that all things considered, uh, including going back and doing back stitching and all of that stuff, if you averaged 100 stitches an hour and the pieces that I was looking at were full coverage, which most of them actually are, the ones that I had started that I would want to do, if I stitched three hours a day, which for me is a lot, it's my goal, it's what I've been trying to do since November, when I have a day where I don't get three hours in, I usually carry it over to the next day um, and add it to that day's three hours. Uh, it would take me 538 days just to stitch the few, I think there were six or seven of them, that I already have started. And that wasn't including uh, his eyes on the sparrow, by the way. <laughs> that was only including... Uh, the other things that I've I've showed you, um, yeah, f f over 500 days, and that's such a tiny fraction of all I have to stitch. So I'm not buying more, folks. Um, I'm going to try not to. If I have to get floss from somebody, I'm going to try to sneak something into the cart that I can use that isn't a kit or a chart if I can, or that I can give to somebody else, um, or I'll just suck it up and eat the shipping because that's better than buying more than I can't do. If I go to eBay, I'm going to look at the pricey stuff, because I can't afford it and won't spend money on it. Um, oh, and by the way, sometimes with those things, since the price often follows with them being out of print, I'll come across one that I already have in my stash, and I'll be like, oh, well, I didn't pay anything like that for it. I need to stitch mine. You know, so it, it often turns me around and sends me back to what I have, because I see things that I like and have. Okay, I have talked on and on and on. Thank you for watching. This is probably like my second longest video ever. I apologize. That's what happens when it's been seven months. I will come back to you when I have something to show, whenever that might be. I hope you are all well and healthy and happy and have more people in your life than I do because I've, I've told my sister I'd give anything just to have her and my brother-in-law in the same house with me. He could be in another room reading a book, she could be doing our artwork, I could be stitching, we don't even have to talk to each other, I just want a person in my life. Um, I told her, I, you know, I was calculating in my head, could I, how many days could I leave the fish and the cat alone without getting a sitter, you know, long enough to drive to her state and visit her and come back, so like a three or four day trip to go there, stay a day or two and come back. And I knew I couldn't really do it. And she said, the problem is you have to get out of the car. You have to go places like public restrooms, which are, you know, not to be too gross, but people flush and the bacteria spreads everywhere, viruses spread everywhere. Um, you can't drive, you, she's six and a half hours away, <laughs> okay? You can't go without stopping for gas and other necessities. So yeah, she may not be infected, I may not be infected, but that doesn't mean you wouldn't get infected going back and forth. So, yeah, I hope you have people in your life. I hope you appreciate the people in your life. I hope that you're all staying healthy and well. Keep on stitching. Try to be happy. Thanks. Bye.